Remember way back when, before the pandemic began, we sat down with the new president of Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. That was back in January, and since then, Hutch has been very busy leading research against COVID. Dr. Lynch joins us now for an update. Tom, have you had a day off since all this started? Well, Amity, I, I don't think so. It's been an incredibly intense time for everybody at the Hutch working on COVID and continuing to work really hard on cancer. You are doing amazing things there. Let's get started with the latest news. You just opened the COVID-19 Clinical Research Center in another facility. What are scientists doing there? So two things. So Amity, one of the most important things about COVID research is everything we know about drugs like remdesivir and dexamethasone and the monoclonal antibodies are in patients who are hospitalized, who have a lot of disease that's very advanced in nature. What we really want to find out is how do these drugs work for people with early disease when you have a chance to possibly prevent them from becoming hospitalized? Well, to do that, you need a dynamic, fantastic outpatient clinical research center. And that's what the COVID Clinical Research Center is. It's a specific building we have at the Hutch just for patients who are participating either in vaccine trials or are subjects or volunteers for treatment trials. So it's a clinical research center that we are incredibly proud of. That is the second incredible. Thing we, yeah, it's, it's really remarkable. And it gives, it gives access to early studies for a whole patient population that we didn't have before. When you're talking about drugs like remdesivir or, or drugs that have been already on the market, you need all that data to look and see, correct, if this is going to be a valid treatment? You, you absolutely do. And, and for example, particularly in cancer as well, when you're looking, when you're doing uh, studies early in cancer, you generate lots of data. And it's very difficult to know what's noise and what is giving you a signal that can point you to a new treatment that could make a difference for patients. And that's why that intersection between having biologists work with data scientists is so critical because data scientists can't do it on their own. Biologists can't do it on their own. You mentioned cancer, and we've heard that the pandemic has impacted cancer diagnoses. As a leading cancer center, what, are, what can be done to address this issue? So I think, I think, Amity, one of the things I'm concerned about is that with uh, the pandemic going on, people are putting off their screenings. They're putting off their mammograms. They're putting off their colonoscopies. Uh, because, listen, you, these are things that people think, well, you know, I, I don't have to do it this year. Well, if you forget about doing it, you miss the chance to catch cancers early. And those are the cancers we can cure. And there's been a study that's been done by the National Cancer Institute that suggests that there may be an additional 10,000 deaths from cancer over the next decade from people who missed screening this year. Yeah. Really important to keep up with your cancer yeah. screenings. You can't let that lapse. I'm 41 without a mammogram, and I'm going to get one in a few weeks. So that is it's fantastic. Key. Yeah, fantastic. It's, it's very important. It is so important. So I have a quick question. Final question for you. What have you learned as a leader during this pandemic that you're going to carry with you as you move forward, as we all move forward? So I'd say a couple of things, Amy. I think first, we crave connection with each other. And look, we, we try to do it on Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. We try to do it in virtual ways, but, but people really need to be together socially, work-wise. And I think that we're gonna find ways to do that when the pandemic's over. Second, I think there's some people who can work remotely um, in a way that can still be an incredible way to contribute yeah. to the mission of the Hutch or any other business or mission. So I think we've learned a lot about the way we work. And then finally, I'd say about Seattle, I learned about the remarkable resilience of the people who are here. This is truly a remarkable region. The people are extremely motivated and, and very mission driven um, uh, to, 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 to helping us look at COVID and, and to defeat cancer. That makes my heart happy to hear it. It is so true. We are a strong folk here. Um, really quickly, where can people go to get more information or find out how, how we can help the Hutch? So we've got the Fred Hutch website, and we'll be happy to give you that URL so that you can show that. It's, it's a, a wonderful opportunity for people who might be interested in participating in some of these trials um, uh, as, as, a, as a volunteer or as a subject in some of the clinical trials. We'd be delighted to do that. And anything else about cancer, early detection, treatment at the Hutch, we'll get you that website information. Thank you so much, Dr. Lynch. It is a pleasure to talk with you again and learn so many great things about the Hutch. We will, of course, hope to catch up with you again soon. Emily, look forward to it. Thank you so much.